Hi, Josh here. We recently released a big update for the Modius controller which adds a lot of new features. In this video, I'll be covering the new flexible I.O. subsystem and what configurations you can accomplish with it. You can find all the details in the blog posts linked in the description below, but here is a brief recap. With the new flexible I.O. subsystem, the two external ports on Modius can be used to monitor many types of encoders or auxiliary systems. Up to three encoders can be monitored, and those encoders can be used either for commutation, output position control, disambiguation, or just monitoring by the application. Let's look at how those are used with respect to the Modius block diagram. Commutation is necessary to turn requested torques into desired PWM signals at the motor phase wires. Output position control is needed to turn desired positions and velocities into desired torques. The same encoder can be used for many things, so by default Modius is set up in the same way it always has been, where the onboard magnetic encoder is used for both commutation and output position control, and available for monitoring by the application. The rest of this video is a series of examples, each showing a different encoder configuration, how to set it up, and a little bit about why you might want to use each one. There are a lot of examples, so feel free to use the seek bar to skip to the ones that interest you the most. Or you could watch all of them, and maybe you'll learn something new. In either event, this video is available in article form, linked in the description below. Let's get started! The default configuration of Modius uses the onboard AS5047P absolute magnetic encoder connected via an internal SPI bus for both commutation and position control. This can be used for a wide variety of applications and strikes a decent balance between performance and complexity. To use it, just take a Modius fresh from the factory, mount it to a motor with an appropriate sense magnet like in the dev kit, and run Modius tool t one calibrate With this setup, we have torque velocity and position control. For torque, we'll command a 0.1 newton meter torque and observe that it works throughout the revolutions. For velocity, we'll try some slow speeds. some moderate speeds, and some faster speeds. And for position control, we can move between any absolute position. In this setup, the position is absolutely known to within one rotation of the rotor, even across power cycles. The biggest limitation of this setup is that the controller must be physically mounted in proximity to the sense magnet. Many common motor types, such as hoverboard motors, include integrated Hall effect encoders, which can be used for commutation and basic velocity control. To use these with Modius, an appropriate cable must be constructed, and if the Hall effect sensors are not 3.3 volt compatible, a level shifting circuit would be needed. This particular random hoverboard motor from eBay has 3.3 con volt compatible Hall effect sensors that require an external 3.3 volt supply. With Modius 4.8 and 4.11, the only port where Hall effect sensors can be used is the external primary encoder connector labeled as ENC on the board, and referenced as AUX1. Ground and 3.3 volts should be connected appropriately, and the three Hall effect lines can be connected to any of the remaining four pins, although I tend to use pins 1, 2, and 3, labeled as K, O, and I, and leave pin 0, labeled as C, unconnected.
To configure this, we use the aux1 configuration, first disabling the spy function. Then we configure the connected pins as hall with a resistive pull-up. We enable the hall function. To verify this is working, we can look in the aux1 hall tree and verify that the counts advance as the motor spins. Now we need to go to motor position and change the zeroth source. It will now be type hall. The CPR and other values do not need to be changed. Before calibrating, we'll set up some other configuration that will be useful for later. The PID gains will be a KP of 10 and a KD of 1, and we'll set the min and maximum position to NAN. Next, to calibrate, some additional options must be passed to Modius Tool, including the number of motor poles. In this setup, we have access to torque control, and velocity control that works well at moderate to high speeds. But not at low speeds. Position control is available, but is not absolutely referenced, and is relatively coarse, with an accuracy around 4 degrees. If Modius cannot be co-located behind the sense magnet, but an AS5047P absolute magnetic encoder is otherwise sufficient, then the encoder can be connected to the ENC port on Modius R4.8 and newer. This will require either a Picos box connector to be installed on the blank pad, or a cable to be soldered directly to the pads. Then a suitable cable can be constructed to attach to the external encoder. To configure this starting from the default, we first have to select the first pin to be a SPI chip select line, and pins 1 through 3 to be SPI. Then the primary SPI function is switched from onboard AS5047P to external AS5047P. We can now take a quick trip over to the diagnostic pane and verify that that encoder is reading properly. While we are configuring, we will also unset the position limits and increase the derivative term to the value shipped on dev kits. Aside from this initial setup, calibration and function are otherwise identical to the onboard AS5047P configuration.
Many absolute encoders are capable of outputting a sine cosine signal, which are two analog waveforms that represent the sine and cosine of the current angle. With Modius 4, 8, and newer, these can be connected to one of aux pins 1, 2, or 3 on the ENC connector, or aux 1. These are labeled K, O, or I, and are connector pin number 4, 5, and 6. The 3.3 volt output on that connector can be used to provide 100 milliamps of power. For ports with analog inputs especially, it is a good idea to configure the port pin functions before connecting the device. Here, to configure, first change the pin mode for the two pins that are used as sine and cosine. Then disable the primary spy function and enable the primary sine cosine function. To calibrate it, we will plot the current raw values of both channels and spin the motor, then look at the rough center. That will be our aux1.sinecosine.common value. Finally, we will set the motor position first source to be sine cosine. The CPR we missed here, but we'll get soon enough. We can remove our position limits and then set the position mode KD to an appropriate value for the dev kit. Now we'll do one final check to verify that the value increases appropriately as the motor moves. And sure enough, the CPR actually needs to be 65536 for this configuration. Calibration and operation then proceeds as normal. For this setup, we have largely the same properties as for the onboard or external AS5047 configuration, although sine cosine has typically more noise and less effective resolution than a digital interface, which may impact the audible noise or the control bandwidth you can achieve. Some absolute encoders output an incremental quadrature signal, AB, along with an index pulse, I, or one that activates when the encoder passes over a given position. These provide absolute position, but require that the encoder be moved to pass over the index pulse before that absolute position is known. It is less reliable than true absolute methods such as spy or sine and cosine, as skipped pulses can cause the absolute position to become out of sync. With our 4.8 and 4.11 boards, only the ENC connector, so aux1, has the three required pins. A suitable harness must be constructed. The 3.3 volt output on the connector can be used to provide up to 100 milliamps of power to the encoder. Here, for demonstration purposes, I have built a harness that connects the ABI outputs from an external AS5047P to those pins. To configure, change the pin modes to the two quadrature lines to be quad SW. Change the pin mode for the index pin to index. Then disable the onboard spy function and enable the index and quadrature function. For the quadrature function, the CPR from your encoder must be entered. Here it is 4000 as I am using an AS5047P's quadrature outputs. 
Let's look in the diagnostic view and verify that the pins are read as expected. Next, we set the first source to be quadrature instead of spy, and set the incremental index to be 1 for aux1. When calibrating, Modius tool will take the extra step of spinning the motor to find the index position. In use, your application will be responsible for executing that homing behavior. The position mode control command has a new option, the fixed voltage override that lets you specify that for the duration of that one command, no field oriented control will be used and instead a fixed voltage will be applied. That can drive a rotation of slightly greater than one revolution, like so, to ensure that the index pulse has been found. If position or torque control is otherwise attempted before the index pulse is found, a runtime error is generated. Aside from the initial seeking step and any possibility of missed steps, this mode has all the same performance properties as the onboard encoder, limited by the choice of the encoder which generates the quadrature pulses. If the primary encoder measures the position of the rotor, and a gear reducer is used, then it is unable to disambiguate between different sectors of the output shaft on its own, as multiple output positions have the same rotor position. One way to resolve this is to use a low rate, low performance I2C based absolute encoder at power on to determine what sector the output shaft is located in. To make this work, a suitable harness will be necessary to connect the I2C sensor. For Modius R4.8 and 4.11 boards, only the ABS or AUX2 connector supports I2C. Pin 0 is SCL and pin 1 is SDA. The 3.3 volt output can be used to supply up to 100 milliamps of current to the sensor. To configure, set pins 0 and 1 on AUX2 to be I2C and disable the AUX2 spy function. Configure the first I2C device to the appropriate type here in AS5048. At this point, the AUX2 tree in the diagnostics view should show values being reported from the sensor. Next, we can configure the second source, source number one, to use on auxiliary port number two, an I squared C function from the zeroth device, a CPR of 65536 to be output relative, and a low pass filter frequency of 10 Hz. At this point, we should make sure that the sign and the offset of the two sources are consistent. We can see that source 1 is moving in the opposite direction to source 0, so we will change the sign of source 1. We will configure both offsets to be 0 when the output line is pointing directly up by selecting appropriate offsets to enter into the motor position, sources, config, 
until the compensated value for each reads approximately zero. Finally, we can configure this source as the power on reference by selecting it in motor position output dot reference source. This mechanical demonstration has a two to one reducer. So in motor position rotor to output ratio, we enter 0 0.5. Calibration proceeds as normal at this point. We can see that the output shaft has two distinct locations where the rotor has the same position. If we reboot the firmware in each position by using D reset, we can see that the output position is correctly captured. In this configuration, the control capabilities and performance will otherwise match that of the primary encoder in use. In this configuration, the onboard encoder is used for commutation, and a separate encoder is used to provide a quadrature signal, which is used to generate the output position for position control. To make this work, a harness must be constructed to connect the quadrature signals. For Modius 4.8 and 4.11, the only suitable pins are the two on the ABS, or AUX2 connector as all but one pin on the ENC connector is required for the onboard encoder. This particular encoder is 5 volt based, so there is a separate 5 volt regulator to power it, and both pins on the ABS connector are 5 volt tolerant on both 4.8 and 4.11. For configuration, we go to AUX2 and disable the SPI function, and configure both pins as quad SW. Then we enable the quadrature function and set the CPR to 20,000, as this is a 5,000 cycles per revolution encoder, which produces 20,000 counts per revolution. Source number one has auxiliary port two selected with quadrature as the function. The CPR is set to match a 20,000. For the bandwidth here, I'll set the onboard to 400Hz and the incremental to 200 because I know that that is a bit above the mechanical bandwidth of the test plant. Now we'll verify the signs of the two encoders by looking at them in the diagnostic pane. Source 1 is inverted so we will change its sign to negative one. Source one is set as the motor position output source, while zero is left as the commutation source, and zero is selected as the reference source. This motor is a gimbal motor, so we'll eventually use voltage mo control mode. For now, we'll leave it off. We'll set a control gains of 100 and 0.1. And I'll also set a servo PWM rate of 15 kilohertz to further improve performance on this high inductance motor. Calibration then proceeds as normal. Once calibration is complete, 
we can update the bandwidth of the sensors and set voltage mode control to on. This setup provides torque control, velocity control, and position control. Because the selected incremental encoder has approximately four times the effective resolution than the onboard controller, low speed performance and stiffness are significantly improved. The RLS Axim 2 encoder reads a ring with a code written on magnetic media. It provides high resolution absolute values over a number of possible communication interfaces. Modius is capable of interfacing with it via the RS422 based UART configuration. To make this work, an adapter board is required. For this prototype, a 3.3 to 5 volt boost regulator is used to boost the 3 volt output from Modius to the 5 volt that the Axim 2 requires. A separate MAX 3490 RS422 transceiver is used to convert the UART, RX, and TX to RS422 levels. This mates with a development cable provided by RLS to connect to the encoder. On Modius R4.11, this connects to the ABS port, or AUX2, making note of which is RX and which is TX. To configure, on AUX2 the SPI function is disabled, pins 0 and 1 are configured as UART, and the UART function is selected as AXIM2. We can verify this is working by checking the AUX2 telemetry tree. Then we will configure this on the second source, number 1, by selecting the auxiliary port number 2 and the function as UART. The CPR must be set to 22 bits or 4194304. Finally, motor position commutation source and output source are both set to 1 to point to the second source. While we aren't using them together, I'll still match the signs of the onboard encoder and the Axim 2 in case we compare things later. Finally, for our later tests, we'll set the KP and KD values and unset the position limits. At this point, calibration can proceed as normal. This setup has the same properties as the onboard encoder alone in that torque, velocity, and position control are all available. Additionally, since the AXM2 is much higher resolution, low speed performance and stiffness are significantly improved over the onboard encoder.
Finally, since the Axim 2 provides a complete positioning solution using only the ABS port, it is possible to use it combined with the onboard or another encoder source if helpful. The ICPZ encoder from IC House reads a reflective optical ring to produce high resolution absolute encoder values. It supports many communication modes, although Modius is currently only capable of interfacing with it via SPI. To make this work, an adapter is required. The ICPZ requires both 3.3 volt and 5 volt power, so a boost regulator is used to generate 5 volt from the Modius 3 volt supply. If 3 volts are supplied to the ICPZ, then the spy lines are 3.3 volts, so no further level shifting is required. On Modius R48 and 411, these spy lines connect to the ENC connector, or AUX1. To configure, we use AUX1 and select pins 1, 2, and 3 as spy, and pin 0 as spy chip select. The function should be changed to ICPZ. We can verify it is working by looking in the AUX1 telemetry window. Next we will update motor position to update the source zeros CPR to 24 bits or 16777216. By default, it already points to the AUX1 spy function. Finally, we'll update our PID and position limits for later testing. The ICPZ requires a moderate amount of configuration and calibration after an installation. It is possible to use diagnostic mode commands to do so for Modius, but the actual process is too involved to describe here. Instead, it is assumed that it has been provisioned using the IC House tool separately. At this point, Modius specific calibration proceeds normally. Operation proceeds with the same basic properties as onboard control, in that torque, velocity, and position control are all available. Since the ICPZ is much higher resolution than the onboard encoder, low speed performance and stiffness are much improved. The fixed voltage mode can be used to drive a motor in a manner similar to a stepper motor, and no encoder is required. Modius will apply a constant phase voltage to the terminals of the motor, drawing constant power, and there is no position or velocity feedback. To configure this, manually enter the number of motor poles in motor.poles. Configure servo fixed voltage mode and set servo fixed voltage control V to the desired phase voltage. I'll also disable the position limits for testing purposes. No calibration is required in this mode. In this mode, no torque control is available and no closed loop velocity or position control is available open loop control of velocity and position is possible. Since it is operated like a micro-stepping stepper motor, velocity and position control is relatively poor.
and if external torque exceeds that produced by the configured fixed voltage, then steps will be skipped. Any of the pins on either auxiliary port can be used for digital input and digital output, and some can be used for analog input. I'll demonstrate digital inputs and outputs here by connecting a pigtail cable to the ABS connector of a Modius 4.11 board. I'll start by configuring both as digital inputs using the appropriate pin configuration in TVU. For digital inputs, the current value can be read in the diagnostic console or via the register protocol. I'll activate each pin in turn and we can see that yes, it does change. Now to demonstrate digital outputs. I'll switch both pins to be a digital output and connect one of them to a multimeter. Outputs can have their value set via the aux out command or via the register protocol. Let's set a few different values and verify that yes, it does change on the multimeter. Analog inputs are available too, although for Modius 4.8 and 11, they are only accessible on the ENC connector and if the onboard encoder is not being used. They can be read via TVU or the register protocol. Bindings for all of these register protocol operations are available in the Python Modius library. That's all for now. Like and subscribe if you want to see more updates and thanks for watching.